I have tonight um, what some might call a spotlight technique. I call it lazy girl fussy cutting. Um, but basically it's a way to cut out an image using a punch. And these are two samples that I made today. Um, I used the two inch punch and the two and a quarter inch punch. And I'll show you how I, how I did all this. I'm going to make one of these from start to finish, um, in different papers. But, um, this sample I used, let's see, I think this is called the true love paper. It's all black and white. And I used a flower from, from this sheet and I colored it using Highland Heather and I believe old olive light, uh, stamp and blends. And then this card, this flower is from the fine art floral. Uh, this just hit my craft table this week. I love this paper. Um, the original artwork was made with a kind of a real heavy oil painting. I think that's called impasto. I'm not sure. And then they photograph it so you can see all the texture. And I just love this, the look of this. Um, so anyway, I used one of the, the blooms off of this sheet. You can see where I cut it out for the spotlight on this card. So these are pretty simple um, because they use punches. I like using punches just because they're so quick. Uh, you don't, you know, you can just in a couple seconds punch out a circle. So for my sample card, let me get all my pieces out. I'm going to use a floral from the Hydrangea Hill paper pack. And I think I'm going to use this one. What I did today when I was working on my cards is I made myself a little template. I cut this with the two inch circle punch so that I could audition images by laying this over top. And this way I can check and see if things are going to work with this format that I'm going to show you tonight. So this is going to work. I can see that that floral can be cut with the two inch punch. So I'm going to grab the punch and that's going to be the first thing I'll do is punch out that floral. I have to make sure I can reach it. I can. If I wanted to come further down on this floral, I could cut off a little bit on this side. And I think I'll go ahead and do that just so I make sure I can get that centered the way I want it. Because what happens is the edge of the paper will hit the back of the punch. There we go. Just like that. That gives me a little more freedom to move this around. And I think that looks good right there. So I'm going to punch that out. Just set that aside. So I'll get this punch out of the way. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little template of sorts for the placement. I'm going to put my card over here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to punch a piece of cardstock so that I get the placement of this highlight exactly in the middle of my cardstock. So this template is cut to three and one quarter plus a 30 second. And you're saying, what, Kim? <laughs> okay, so I put it in the paper trimmer to three and a quarter, and then I just budged it over just a half of a sixteenth. You know, our paper trimmer has one sixteenth markings. I'm going to get mine out here and show you. Make a big racket. Our paper trimmer has one sixteenth markings. And so when I put this in the paper trimmer, I had it at three and a quarter, and I just, I moved it over a half of a sixteenth. And the reason I did that, you, 
probably can't really see that on the camera, but I moved it over just a half of a sixteenth. Anyway, the reason I did that is I found if I didn't, one side of my um, cardstock was a teensy bit wider than the other. So I just, I budged that over and I cut this to three and a quarter plus, that would actually be one thirty second. If you wanted, you could just make it three and a quarter. <laughs> and, um, but it bothered me that it was off a little bit. So that's why I did it that way. So this is three and that would be nine thirty seconds or three and a quarter plus one thirty second by four inches. So I'm going to take my two inch, I'm sorry, I'm going to take my two and a quarter inch punch now and I'm going to have this piece of paper in portrait orientation. That means it's taller than it is wide. And I'm going to turn it and put it in the punch. So this is the top of the paper, the cardstock. This is the top. And I'm going to make it even with this edge of the punch. This will help you see better. So I'm lining up the top of this piece of cardstock with the edge of this punch. And I have it all the way against the back of the punch in this way. So now when I punch this, the circle that I just punched is centered in there and it's a it's a little closer to the top than to the sides, but I want it that way because we're going to put our sentiment down here. So that's why I um, cut this piece to the dimensions that I did so that when I place my highlight in here, it's going to be in the middle. Okay, it kind of positions everything for me. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we're going to stamp our sentiment in the bottom right corner of this and I already have one done. I'm going to make mine a thank you card tonight. So I've already stamped my sentiment. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start layering the card together. So this piece, which is also green on my sample card here, measures, let's see, three by four and seven eighths, three by four and seven eighths. And I'm actually going to adhere this that I just punched out to this one. And I'm gonna remove this because I don't want to get glue on it. And when I adhere it, I want to adhere it so that the circle that I just punched is just on the cardstock completely on the cardstock, but not too much further over. And I'm going to put it above center. So I have a little more room down here than up here. And I'm going to use liquid glue to do this. So when I glue this, I don't want to get glue on this edge over here because it's going to hang over. But I'm going to go around here, try to get it thin. About over to the edge of this circle is where I'm going. And again, I'm lining up the right edge of my circle and just coming in on the cardstock with it. Just like that. All right. Now I can assemble my circle or my my highlighted flower. And of course I don't, oh, there it is. And I'm going to layer this flower onto Gorgeous Grape. So since I cut, the, I cut the flower out with a two inch punch, so I'm gonna cut my mat behind the flower with a two and a quarter inch punch. That's why I love punches, they're just so easy. Just pick them up and pop and it's cut out. 
So this um, larger two and a quarter inch circle will fit right inside there because I punched that circle with the two and a quarter inch punch. Now, you might be asking me, why couldn't I just um, adhere these together without doing this circle and glue them on? And the answer is you absolutely could. And again, the reason I do it this way is because it makes a template for me and everything ends up exactly where it should be. So this way, I'm pretty sure everything's gonna look the way it should. So I like to put the middle circle in first or the, the mat for behind the flower in first. So now that circle is right in the middle where I want it and this I'm going to adhere in the middle of the mat. And since I'm using liquid glue, I have a second or two to kind of move that around. There we go. So the next thing I want to do is I want to wrap my ribbon around here. And I'm going to wrap it so that it is between the sentiment and the circle and I want the bow over on the left. Kind of balances things out a little bit. All right, so that's tied up and probably I could scooch that over a bit. There we go. And then this is going to go on a mat, but I'm gonna put the mat, so this is gorgeous grape. I'm gonna put this on the card first because I'm gonna pop this part up on dimensionals. and then I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this and pop it up. I'm going to center this cardstock, the bigger piece, top to bottom, and then this edge and this edge I'm going to use to kind of center left and right, more or less. Probably be a little closer to the left. There we go. Very simple and very nice way to highlight a floral. And we certainly have a lot of florals in our papers. I have another little technique that I want to show you that is really um, only useful occasionally. And I'll explain in a second. Every once in a while, Stampin' Up! comes out with a paper that is an outline and I've already cut this one I, I shouldn't have but I didn't know I was going to use it as an example they come out with a paper that is just an outline this is from the uh, what is this called this is from the dandy garden paper pack so it's an outline of these dandy lines and it matches up perfectly with this colored in pattern. It's the same pattern, it's just this is colored in and this is not. As far as I know right now, these are the only two outline solid image papers that we have that match up perfectly. Um, there have been others, um, papers that are um, no longer available. But right now, this one is the only one that I'm aware of. What you can do is you can make a spotlight when this happens. So what I did was I took the 
I forget what size I use. Okay, I took the two and a quarter inch punch and I just punched out a section of this that I knew was on here because I want to then, after I remove this outline section, I want to be able to come in here with this solid version and line it up where it goes. I don't know how well you can see this, but this dandelion leaf right here continues up on this little bud continues over here and this is the top of that. The outline dandelion paper in this example was cut to that same three and a quarter plus one thirty second of an inch width. That allowed the circle to be centered left to right when I punched it. This paper was cut to four and three quarters of an inch long and I allowed it to extend out of the punch on the side, the top of the paper, about a half of an inch and that brought the circle down further into the middle of the paper. The paper with the solid image was cut just a little bit smaller than the outline paper. That way I had room to maneuver the solid image behind the outline image as you'll see in the next step. And so what I would do next is I would adhere this piece to the back of the outline. And the way I'll do that is I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around the opening of the outline. I didn't have a lot of choice about where I placed the circle on this because, like I said, I only had a scrap of this left that would work. Um, so it's not ideal, but I wanted to show you this technique. So I'm just kind of eyeballing where this lines up and I'm using that little, this little bud right here and the leaves. Okay, so now I have that adhered. Now I can put this on a mat which I've already cut. And then I'm going to tie, I'm going to use this gingham ribbon. I already made a, a little sentiment for this card. I'm going to tie a bit of gingham bumblebee ribbon around here. And I will pop this up on dimensionals. Pop that up and then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals as well. And have it just kind of extend off the side there that way. Okay. So there you go. That's called spotlighting also where you have a filled in version of an outline. And I put it behind so that I'd be able to adjust it to match up with the outline. So there's that and then the other, whoops, the other spotlighting we did was really just spotlighting a floral on a card or as I call it lazy girls fussy cutting so there you go a, a way to use your two and a quarter and two inch circle punches you'll find dimensions for all of these projects on my blog post the link is below in the description of this video if you liked today's video please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you again next time thanks <music>